In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about how to use custom components in Ionic 2, or more specifically, how to build them. Uh, just recently, I released a, a tutorial on building a simple progress bar component in Ionic 2, and that's the article I have on screen now. Uh, so maybe after this uh, tutorial, if you want, go take a look at this one and see if you can build that. Uh, but I just wanted to, I guess, talk more generally about components and cover very basically how they work. And before I get into generating our own custom component and talking through how to do that, uh, I just want to point out that basically the entire structure of Ionic 2 applications and of Angular uh, app applications are made of components within components within components. Uh, so if we take a look at even the Ionic um, library here, the source code for that, if I come into the source folder, go to components, you'll see all of the things that you use in Ionic 2, uh, all the different components like the lists and the segments and all that kind of stuff, uh, they're all made up of components. So if I uh, go to one of these, I'll just go to the uh, item component here. So if I open the TypeScript file for this, and we just scroll down a little bit, uh, you'll see that this is uh, a component. And if we jump into our own application here, if we open up um, the app folder and take a look at the root component, uh, you can see we that's a component there. Uh, all of our pages that we generate, uh, those are components. And of course, if we want to generate our own custom components, we are going to use the component decorator as well. So an Ionic 2 application is just this tree of components. Now when you're first working with Ionic 2, uh, the only components you're really going to be creating yourself are these pages. And there's not a whole lot going on uh, on here. You'll just define any functions you need to use and hook them up to your templates and that's it. Uh, all the, I guess, the complicated components that you're going to be using, you're going to be importing from the Ionic 2 library uh, where they've already been built for you. So when you do start creating your own custom components, there are a couple of concepts that don't really apply to uh, creating pages like this. So of course, I've already got a uh, example application generated here. So feel free to do the same if you're following along. Uh, and what I'm going to do is just create a custom component here uh, called my component. Okay, so you would have seen that fly into the left over here, and we have this component uh, generated now. So this is just a simple default component that will just uh, render out some text. So we can set this text property to whatever we want, and then that's going to display that. Uh, if we look at the template for this component, it's just a um, an interpolation of, of the text member variable. And so if we use this component in our application, it's just going to render out hello world wherever we put it. And so basically to use a component, we use its selector here. Uh, we add that to our template uh, like this, just like a normal HTML tag. And then that's going to add it's going to inject the template for that component wherever you put it, and it's going to hook up whatever functionality you have uh, in the TypeScript file here, and of course any styles you have defined in here, it's going to apply that as well. So just to show you uh, it working, if I jump into uh, our home file, we're going to add that. But before we can use the component, uh, we need to set it up in the module file. So I'll have to import that here. Now it's probably a pretty poor naming choice because uh, components by default when being generated with the Ionic command line interface uh, get component uh, appended to the end. So now it's called my component component, uh, which is a bit silly, but we'll just go with it. So we'll import that from the uh, components folder. And then we're also going to have to add that to uh, the declarations uh, array here. Okay, so now we've got that set up, we should be able to use it anywhere in our entire application uh, that we want. So if I jump into home.html now, I'm just going to get rid of um, this default uh, content here. And instead, we're just going to use our my component component. And so this is the same idea as like here using ion content or ion header or ion navbar. They're all just custom components. I'll save that and we're going to serve it just to make sure that it's all working. Okay, so I've got the application up now and you can see that hello world is being rendered out to the screen here. Uh, so if I jump into the component again and change this to uh, say hello everybody, 
save it, and that should be reflected there. Okay, so that's simple enough. If you just want to uh, render out some static HTML uh, that you can configure in here manually, you can just place this component wherever you want, and that's just going to just drop that uh, wherever you need it. Uh, but a lot of the time, uh, when you're creating a custom component, it's because you're trying to create some kind of specific functionality. So we're going to need to do a few things that are a little bit more complex than just dropping a component in place. So the two most important concepts to understand when creating custom components is input and output. Now input is uh, what the component uh, has passed into it, so the user can specify something that the component can take in and do something with. And output is things that are data that's flowing back out of that component that people can then grab from the component so they can listen for on that component. So to use input and output, uh, you need to import them from uh, the Angular library. And we're also going to uh, import something called event emitter. And the event emitter is going to be used with that output to generate an event that uh, we can listen to on the component. So we can use that uh, the at symbol just like we do with the, the decorator here and uh, supply input and then we're going to name the, the input property that we're going to use. Uh, so we're just going to call this um, my text and then we're going to assign that input to a member variable in this uh, component here. So we're just going to call that text to use. So this means now that we can supply an input called my text and it's going to assign it to text to use. So if I come back into uh, the home page now, I can supply that uh, input value here. So if I now do uh, my text equals something, that's going to input that value into our component and assign it to text to use. So I can make use of that now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, hook into the ng after view init hook here, which is going to wait for everything to load and then uh, do this. And then I'm just going to set this dot text to um, the text to use member variable. So this should overwrite that hello everybody with whatever we supply in here. So if we take a look now, you can see that it says something now. Uh, which is exactly what we want. Now you can also use uh, property binding here, so if you wanted to uh, make this dynamic, you could uh, surround my text with square brackets and instead use a uh, variable here. So maybe we have something called my home text, uh, and then in our home.ts file, we can define my home text uh, as, uh, we'll say this is the home page. So now whatever this um, variable is here is going to be attached to this my text input, which is then going to be passed into our component. So if I take a look at that now, you can see that it says this is the home page. Okay, so that's how we can get uh, some data into our components. And now we're going to talk about how we can get some data out of uh, components. And we can do that by, uh, just like we can add listeners for clicks by doing this, we can create our own custom event here that we can listen to. And so when that uh, thing happens in our component, uh, we're going to be able to do something. We're going to be able to take that data and do something with it. So instead of click, we might do something like, uh, we'll just call it something happened. And when we detect that something happened event, we are going to trigger a function called uh, do something. And so then we could define this do something uh, in our home page here and we will just log out we did it okay so we're listening for that event now but we still need to create that event we need to make that happen on this component at some point and so you could trigger that event at any time for any reason that you want in your component but for the sake of uh, the example we're just going to set up an interval that is going to um, trigger the event every 10 seconds, or we'll make it every three seconds. So first we need to set up our output now. So we do the same thing as we did for the input, but this time we use output, and we will call that something happened. Uh, let me just check that's what I called it. Yep, so something happened. So we're gonna add our output here, and now just like we did with uh, the input, uh, instead we use output, 
and then we're going to create a variable that is um, going to be used to generate this event. So uh, that's called uh, something happened, uh, which is the same as the one we used here. So we do something happened, and then we're going to do something a little bit different now. We're going to create a new event emitter, which is the thing that we imported here. And so this is going to allow us to generate that event uh, that we're listening to. So we're going to come into this uh, ng after view init uh, function now, and we're going to set up that interval. Uh, so an interval will uh, it's like a set timeout. It's going to run some code uh, every say three seconds or four seconds or however long we specify. So I'm going to do let interval equal set interval, and then I'm going to supply the function I want to use, and then that's going to run every three seconds. So in here, all I'm going to do is use that event emitter that we've set up here, something happened. So I'm going to do this dot something happened dot emit, and then we can also pass some data back through that event. Uh, so I'm just going to use just a simple string here and just say uh, it's time. So if I save that, and we jump back into the browser now, see if things are working as we expect. Okay, so the first we did it just popped up there, and hopefully that's going to keep happening uh, every three seconds. And it looks like that's exactly what is happening. So that interval is running every three seconds. It's calling the emit method on our something happened output, which is an event emitter. And because it's an output, we can uh, listen to that on the component here, and we trigger a function when that event happens, which in this case is do something, which if we jump into our TypeScript file, is just a function that logs out we did it. Now if we wanted to, we could also pass data through that event. Uh, right now all we're doing is passing its time through there, but we're not actually making use of that. So uh, if I instead come into our HTML file here, and I'm going to pass through that event, and then in our TypeScript file, we're also going to pass that through, and we're just going to log out that uh, the data from the event instead. So now if we jump back into the browser, you can see that its time is being passed through now, and that's the value that is being passed in here. So you can pass, this is obviously pretty useless right now, but you could pass in whatever kind of data you wanted uh, when something, com some kind of complex thing happens in your component. You can pass the data for that back through uh, here, and you can listen to it and do something with it. Uh, so a more complicated example of that is the, the content component in Ionic 2. They have an Ion Scroll event, for example. So you listen to it with Ion Scroll, and that's a custom event they've set up. And whenever the component, uh, the content area is scrolled, uh, it's going to emit the data related to that scroll, which includes things like uh, how far it's been scrolled, the velocity of the scroll, all those kinds of complicated things. So this is a really, really simple example, but I just wanted to cover the concepts of input and output as uh, essentially they're the fundamental ideas behind creating your own custom components. So if you want to do a little bit more of a practical example, go take a look at um, this Build a Simple Progress Bar component in Ionic 2 tutorial. Uh, I also have a couple more tutorial, uh, tutorials out about components. Um, I even released a, a much more complex one on creating a photo tilt component. Uh, so if you want to take a look at that, I'll link that as well. Uh, but if you're new to creating custom components in Ionic 2, I hope that clarifies the concepts a bit. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.